Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Davo from Archon Esports, bringing you a 1v1 cast between Raindrop, which is our blue Protoss in the top right-ish hand corner. It's kind of like top right hand corner and a bit. And we're, uh, I, I don't know how to say this nice fellow's name, but in any case, he is the Red Zerg in the bottom left hand corner awesome cool um so again i mean this raindrop fella i mean okay so i was trying to do research on these players as i usually do or have been doing since doing these casts because i you know let's face it, i haven't really been doing them for that long um oh just quickly going to point out that it looks like our Protoss player is actually going to be fast expanding here, or at least expanding quite a lot sooner than he usually would. Um, obviously the key indicator of that is the pylon just below the ramp, of course. Um, anyway, back to my research. I tried to do a little bit of research on these players, and it seemed to me like, well for starters, I can't, I don't know this guy's name. So it's kind of hard to do research on something that you don't actually know the name of. Um, and then Raindrop, to my knowledge, he is a ex-Warcraft 3 player, obviously from Korea, and um, this fellow in the bottom left-hand corner, who we shall know as Red, is also from Korea as well. Awesome, so very, very high skill level players, probably, as most from Korea are. Oh, I don't like the fact that's a stereotype, but I mean, I think generally it's something they should be proud of, because... They really, really do make quite a lot of good players, like uh, OGS Top and um, OGS MC, like that. Yeah. Um, Okie dokie. So, we have the fast expand here from Raindrop, um, which, you know, you could see coming, but it, I don't know. If this had been scouted by Red, then it would kind of be maybe, maybe Red would have rushed. Um, I know if I was in red shoes, I probably would have um, to really get ahead there. Uh, then we've got a gateway on the way from Raindrop 2. He's not bothering waiting to get a cannon or anything like that, having scouted his Zerg opponent. Now, we do have some Zerglings coming in, so, I mean, Raindrop is going to have to do something pretty sharpish. Um, I mean, he does know that the Zerglings are coming. This probe has just seen them. So, really, he's going to have to do something quite quickly about these Zerglings that are incoming, because a lone gateway and a forge isn't really going to do very much. Um, we do have a cannon coming in behind the gateway and forge now. And another gateway itself, but he really does need to block this in very, very, very quickly. There we go. <laughs> Literally in the nick of time, as the phrase goes. But it looks like the Zergling isn't going to get in anyway. Um, he doesn't get a cancel on that pylon. Um, and the Zerg are probably going to go up into the main base to avoid being shot at by that cannon completely. Now this is kind of bad news for Raindrop. Um... Because obviously Zerglings do murder probes somewhat. Um, oh, but the probes can strike back just like this. This is a whole new version of probe wars. Let me put the name thingy down. And let's put this down. Whoa, hello. Wow, that really didn't work. Okay, don't worry. It turns out this replay is old. I didn't realize how old it was because I can't put the UI down using the control W hot please for some reason. It just made my screen do something really, really funny instead. Awesome. Cool beans. Okay, so what do we have on the way for each player? Obviously the staple amounts of workers and stuff like that. Okay, and we have the expansion up and going for the Red Zerg player and the third coming for the Red Zerg player as well. Also, I've got to say this Overlord scouting is actually, you know, pretty decent. Seeing he's got an Overlord here on the high ground so we can see when Raindrop moves out. And he's got the Overlord tucked in the back here that can just kind of have a look in here and maybe army composition in the late game. Now, we do still have this epic battle going on. He has lost a Zergling at one point and it looks like one of them is running around... Well, he was on decreased health, but obviously Zerglings do uh, regenerate over time. So, that's what's happened here. Now, uh, this is Red probably trying to keep Raindrop on his toes somewhat by running the Zalots around his base on his toes, or for that matter, just completely trying to distract him. <laughs> but I mean, at this level of play, just trying to distract people probably isn't such a great tactic. Wow, that Zergling nearly died. Um, seeing as their level of focus is pretty damn huge. 
Okay, awesome. So, I mean, we have our warp gate research on the way from red, and we do actually have a rather large gap here, or, I mean, what seems to be a rather large gap um, from our blue Protoss player, Raindrop. Excellent, okay. We have an evolution chamber and a roach one on the way here, so it looks like um, in order to break down Raindrop's sturdy defences, Red is probably going to go for the roach option, which I completely think is a brilliant idea. Um, finally getting his Zergling speed up as well, which of course is invaluable. Awesome. And finally getting his um, layer. Sorry. Goodness me. Sorry, it's very, very late here. It's... I said good morning at the beginning of the cast, and uh, the reason being, it is 2.30 a.m. Excellent. I just kind of fancy doing a cast, so you know what, I'm here and I'm doing one. Awesome. <laughs> cool beans. Okay, so we do a Zergling, it's moving around, scouting out. Um, now, of course, the Zergling uh, speed research is about to be done any second now, and that's always an exciting time for a Zergling, when he gets his wings. They're much like penguins, although they've got their wings, but they can't fly. Poor bastards. <laughs> okay. Right, and we've also got a Zealot and two sentries moving around here. Two awesome cool beams. Okay, and the Zergling's coming into the base now. These sentries have done something rather clever to defend themselves with. Drag themselves into a corner and defend themselves. This uh, Zealot, on the other hand, is far more unlucky. The Zergling's trying to make a massive, massive push into the uh, sentry's personal space, but it quickly gets corrected by the Zealots. Excellent. Okay. Um, now, we do have a Spire on the way for our Red Zerg. Um, very, 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 in my opinion, kind of classical harassment unit is the Spire, uh, is the Mutalisk, even. Um, which looks, at this point in time, like it could be used to great effect because our Protoss player doesn't have much air cover at all. I mean... Yeah, the sentries do shoot air, but the amount of damage they do is essentially negligible. Um, he really wants to be putting some cannons in the back here, because otherwise I can see a quite dangerous time coming for um, our blue Protoss. So the Spire is on the way. Um, with a lot of roaches as well, and another hatchery. I mean, which would indicate quite a few things. Now, we do have a move out here with the roaches i'm really wondering what he's actually going to do with this move out is he actually just going to go straight for a solid push i mean is he going to go scoop around here have a look and find out that his opponent has another base um i mean to be honest ow either either way that's a lot of roach for not so much defense um sure he has a lot of sentries but i mean there's only so much good the sentries can do with their very very limited weapon power and the roaches of course are very armored Okay, so here we go. Here's the first major engagement of the game. It would be good to not get caught up with so many roaches like that. This really, really, really isn't looking good for our blue Protoss at this point in time. It's just really dependent on whether or not he can hold this back. Um, our red Zerg is going to be going into the other base now, and our blue Protoss is in a lot of trouble. Um, our blue Protoss needs to be very, 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 very careful here about what he does. Um, I mean, just these, this amount of stalkers is going to get crushed by this many roaches, and at this point in the moment, it looks like it might be a GG from our blue Protoss. As well as that, we do have Mutalists coming around the back to harass. Um, we have, the blue Protoss has got some cannons, but it looks like it might not be enough. And we do have Archons on the way, which are very different Mutalists. So the third base from the Protoss does go down indeed. This is really looking very, very, very bad. Um... Very bad, actually, for our uh, Blue Protoss. In fact, I'm not actually sure if there's any way he can come back from this. Um, I mean, our Red Zerg has so much more stuff, really. I mean, if you look at the APM tab, they're essentially the same. It's what you expect from high-level play. Um, let's have a look. Spending. I mean, yeah, the Zerg just flat out has spent more. Really, hmm. I don't know. It's not looking well. Let's put it like this: we have a capped red zerg, 
and an 84 out of 84 Protoss who is destroying his own forge. Um, now, I do believe that Raindrop is screwed and should probably just GG where he stands, to be honest. But you've got to give this man credit, he has balls for carrying on in this game because there is just total annihilation coming his way. I mean, that is quite a lot of stalkers there, but he does need to be very, very careful of the Mutalist because, well, in StarCraft 2, they pretty much kill everything and they move very, very, very quickly. Um, there's there's the Archon going down there. I, I was kind of surprised not to see the Mutalist's magic box from this. And here is some Blink Micro from our Blue Protoss and bringing, in to, bringing the probes into play, which can be a good idea sometimes and other times not such a great idea. Um, I don't know. We... Yeah. It's not looking great for our blue pro or still he's lo losing a lot of probes. A lot of probes. Um and now what's he gonna do? Well he's gonna go for an all-in. Excellent. And to be honest, in this situation I can't think of a much better thing to do. Uh I mean he's got half as many probes as his opponent. I can't see this going very well for the Blue Protoss, but we can see, hey? Oh, those Zerglings getting absolutely murdered by the Stalkers, who do actually have plus two weapons and plus one armor, which is awesome, good for them, whereas our Zerg only has a one armor. Um, I mean, our Red Zerg has just basically sealed the deal with the production of 36 Roaches. Um, which will probably end this this little tirade of stalkers going about the place. It's a very, very kind of heroic, let's call it all in. But the spine crawlers, a mixture of spine crawlers, zerglings, roaches, and mutalisks is going to be the definite end of this. It's like a hard takedown. We got some good uh, blink micro going down here, and there's the GG from Raindrop. Co co conceding. Conceding, there we are, conceding to our Red Zerg, um, who have we known as, um, fruit, sorry, who we have known, there we are, as just Red throughout the, uh, throughout this cast. Now, the identity of Raindrop comes into question here because, I don't know, that was a very solid thrashing. <laughs> A very, very, very solid quest for Ashing. And to be honest, I'd like to know the identity of our Red Zerg. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed, guys. Uh, I will see you guys next time. And have a lot of fun. And have lots of fun playing StarCraft. Also, I think um, we're going to have some sort of little League of Legends show match going on soon. Um, and that will be pretty groovy. So have a good day. Uh, enjoy playing StarCraft. And take it easy. Cheers.